Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders affecting around 5% of children in developed countries. Children with ADHD also have a lot of other comorbid conditions and one of the most common is behavioural sleep problems affecting between 40 and 70% of children. We did some work in the past looking at the impact of sleep problems in children with ADHD. We found compared to ADHD alone, children with sleep problems had worse symptom severity of ADHD, poorer behaviour and quality of life, worse daily functioning and poorer school attendance. We also found that their parents had poorer mental health and poorer work attendance. We therefore aim to evaluate in children aged 5 to 12 years with ADHD and a moderate to severe behavioural sleep problem, the impact of a structured sleep program compared with usual care on the following outcomes. Our primary outcome was ADHD symptoms as measured by parent and teacher report. Our secondary outcomes included parent report of moderate to severe child sleep problems, child sleep patterns as measured by the child sleep habits questionnaire, child behaviour by parent and teacher report, child quality of life, daily functioning and maternal mental health. This was a randomised controlled trial and we recruited children from 21 paediatric practices across Melbourne, Australia. Participants were children aged 5 to 12 years with a moderate to severe sleep problem who met criteria for a sleep disorder as measured by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. The intervention group received a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a trained clinician including a psychologist or paediatric trainee with a follow-up phone call around two weeks later and a second face-to-face -face consultation two weeks after that as required. The intervention consisted of information given to the parents about normal sleep and good sleep hygiene. This might have included, for example, the need to have a bedtime routine, the need to have a set bedtime and to keep the child's bedroom media free. We then offered families a tailored management plan depending on what the child's sleep issue was. This was at, backed up by parent education and support materials that we developed specifically for the study. Control children received usual care from their paediatrician, which typically involves six monthly visits to check on the child's height and weight and blood pressure and progress, and to renew a script for medication as required. 337 families were deemed eligible for our study over a period of 12 months, of whom 72% took part in the study. These families were randomly allocated to the intervention or control group. We followed up all families at three months and six months and we accounted for any loss to follow up through multiple imputation analyses. The following slides show our outcomes at three and six months. They represent mean differences and associated effect sizes between the intervention and control groups for each outcome. All data are adjusted for confounders identified a priori and represent our imputed data. At three months, children in the intervention compared to control group had fewer ADHD symptoms, fewer sleep habit problems, better behaviour, better psychosocial quality of life, better daily functioning, but no difference in parent mental health. Children in the intervention group also had better behaviour in the classroom compared to those in the control group. However, there was no difference in ADHD symptoms per se in the classroom setting. When we looked at our outcomes at six months, we again found a similar pattern. Children in the intervention group had fewer ADHD symptoms, better sleep, better behaviour, better quality of life and better daily functioning. Again, teachers reported fewer behaviour problems in the classroom. When we look specifically at sleep problems in our intervention versus control group, the outcomes were also significant and favoured the intervention group. At three months, only 25% of intervention children still had a sleep problem. And remember, 100% of all our children had a sleep problem when they entered the trial. This rose to 35% at six months. However, in contrast, 55% of control children had a sleep problem at three months, and this fell to 47% at six months. So in conclusion, a brief behavioural sleep intervention had a major impact not only on sleep but also on child ADHD symptom severity and a number of other comorbidities. 
The effects we saw are superior to that of melatonin, a commonly used medication in children with ADHD. Melatonin helps children go off to sleep, but has not been shown to have flow-on effects to child behaviour and quality of life and daily functioning that we have found here. We think our intervention represents a major and highly acceptable non-pharmacological advance for many children with ADHD. We are now in the next steps and have received funding from Australia's National Health and Medical Research Council to trial the effect of this intervention across two states in Victoria and Queensland, Australia. We will now train up paediatricians and child psychologists to roll out this intervention across children in those two states and see if we can get the same results when compared to usual care.